Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update April 29th, 2021. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and this is episode 379. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In today's episode, The Oath of Love releases a new couple picture and trailer. And Lelush finally gets to go home. I got a real kick out of that story. But first, here's what's recently premiered. Deep Brains is a modern medical drama starring Tian Muchen and Wang Kuang, and it premiered on April 28th. It follows two neurosurgeons, one nicknamed the Lone Ranger and the other the Surgery Fanatic, and their competitive escapades in the medical world. If I ever needed a neurosurgeon, I don't know if I'd want anyone nicknamed the Lone Ranger or the Surgery Fanatic. I think I'd want someone like Steady Hands or something like that. Anyway, the drama is slated for 12 episodes and is available on IQ.com with English subs, but you have to search for it using its Chinese name. Phantasmal Night Affairs, The Enchanting Story of Qian is a costume drama starring Sabrina Chu and Dominic Ho, and it premiered on April 28th as well. It follows a kind-hearted scholar who meets and falls in love with a maiden who eventually betrays her demon master for love. If the story sounds familiar, it's because it's another spin-off slash remake of the Hong Kong classic movie A Chinese Ghost Story starring Leslie Cheung and Joey Wang. The most recent remake, to my recollection, is last year's The Enchanting Phantom, starring Chen Xingxu and Eleanor Lee. The Enchanting Story of Qian is slated for 12 episodes and is available on Yuku, no English subs at the moment. The Imperial Coroner is a costume drama starring Su Xiaotong and Wang Ziqi, and it premiered earlier today. The drama follows a girl from a family of coroners. Her life goal is to be certified as an Imperial Coroner. She meets a sickly prince, and together they solve an age-old case and win the Emperor's approval. Another costume drama for your consideration. This one is slated for 36 episodes and is available on WeTV with English subs. And that's it for what's recently premiered. Moving on, here's an update on The Oath of Love. The Oath of Love is an upcoming modern drama starring Yang Zi and Xiao Zhan, and they recently released a new couple poster and trailer. The drama follows a budding young cellist played by Yang Zi and her romance that develops with a physician played by Xiao Zhan after he attends to her father. On April 28th, the drama released a new couple poster on their Weibo. It features the two characters staring at each other tenderly at close range. They also released a new 49 second trailer which gave a little bit more insight to the drama. As of now, the Oath of Love trailers, all of them, not just this newest one, have racked up a hefty 260 million views, with many viewers leaving positive reviews. Anticipation is obviously high. As to when the drama will premiere, well, there's yet to be any official announcement. The word online is that it'll be soon, but who knows what that means. It could be next week, it could be the week before Christmas. The good thing is that there shouldn't be any worry about subs for international audiences for the drama. At the moment, WeTV and Vicky already have it as coming soon, and they both will provide subs. More updates on the Oath of Love as they provide them. And staying on Xiao Zhan just a little longer, here's an article that made me go, really? The article's title was, Upcoming Collaboration with Xiao Li Ying Lost You Forever? Xiao Zhan's anti-fake news group rejects the rumor. According to the Sena Entertainment article, there were rumors floating around that Cao Liying and Xiao Zhan would collaborate on a new costume drama, Lost You Forever. But this Weibo group, who call themselves the Xiao Zhan Anti-Counterfeit or Anti-Fake News Group, shot the rumors down. In a Weibo post, they slapped a big fake on the rumor and added the message, Fake, this is nothing. Reading the article, I was like, really? There's such a thing as the Xiao Zhan anti-fake news group? Apparently so. I guess there's so much fake news out there about him and about other celebs that the existence of groups like these shouldn't be too surprising. I don't know how official this Xiao Zhan anti-fake news group is, but they do have almost 443,000 followers. 
And before we get to Chang Ruoyun and Lalush, a quick word on ExpressVPN. Now, whether I'm at home or traveling, the first thing I do before I surf the net is log on to ExpressVPN and connect to a server. Not only do I use ExpressVPN to protect my data from spies and hackers, I find it especially useful to unblock geo-restricted content like dramas and movies on YouTube, Netflix, and other websites. ExpressVPN is giving away 3 extra months free on a 12-month plan to all viewers of my channel. All you have to do is use the link in the description below, expressvpn.com forward slash Marcus Sim. And moving on, here's some celebrity news, beginning with Zhang Ruoyun. Zhang Ruoyun sues his father and claims his signature was forged. Zhang Ruoyun starred in the widely praised 2019 drama Joy of Life. Many people, myself included, enjoyed that drama and I'm looking forward to a sequel which has been announced. I'm not exactly sure where they're at on the sequel. As far as I know, the producers announced it last October and were working out the schedules with the cast, but until now, there's been nothing official about them starting filming. I will update on that when I hear something. But on the matter at hand, legal disputes are complicated especially when they involve multiple parties, so I will try to simplify this one. According to Sena Entertainment, Hua Tzu Film and TV had a legal agreement with three parties to make four shows. The parties were Zhang Ruoyun, Zhang Ruoyun's father Zhang Jian, and Zhang Ruoyun's management company Mengdu Pictures. The agreement didn't materialize and Hua Tzu wanted some of their money back, so they sued the three parties for 144 million RMB, approximately 22 million US dollars. Now, Zhang Ruoyun is saying that he did not sign the agreement and that his signature was forged. He requested not to be a part of any of this, but the courts denied his request, so he will have to defend himself in the lawsuit. Subsequently, Zhang Ruoyun is suing his father, but his father is contending that he had authorization from Zhang Ruoyun via WeChat to negotiate and sign on his behalf. From the outside, it sounds pretty simple. If Zhang Ruoyun received any money that he wasn't entitled to, then he just has to return it. After all, the shows didn't materialize and he didn't do the work. But I think there's more to it that hasn't been revealed. In any case, lawsuits like these are unfortunate, especially when they involve family. No matter who wins or loses, it's never pleasant. Here's a picture of father and son during more pleasant times. Zhang Jian, by the way, is a filmmaker, so they're both in the same industry. Next up, here's a story that I found hilarious. Lalush finally gets to go home. A Russian contestant who was stuck on Produce Camp 2021 begged viewers to vote him off, and they finally did. Lalush, whose real name is Vladislav Sidorov, is a 27-year-old Russian who became one of the most talked about contestants on Produce Camp 2021, a Chinese boy band survival type reality TV show. He got on the show by pure coincidence. He was initially on there to be a translator, but they noticed his good looks and persuaded him to become a contestant. So he did, considering that his lodgings and meals would be covered and that he would earn some extra income. Evidently, he would go on to regret it. Becoming a member of a boy band is not my dream as I can't sing and dance. I hope the judges won't support me, he said. Dancing and singing every day, I'm really exhausted and starting to regret my decision. The show gave out grades for performances, and while other eager contestants wanted an A, he wanted an F, or as he put it, F stands for freedom. He wanted desperately to get off the show, but was bound by the contract, and could only get off if viewers voted him off. So what did he do? He started tanking his performances, including performing a Russian rap song poorly, showing no interest in practice sessions, and pretending not to understand Chinese when in reality he speaks Chinese, Japanese, Russian, and English. But the more he did that, the more fans loved him and voted to keep him on the show. One fan said that his indifference was refreshing. I guess if everyone else is trying so hard and you're the only one who doesn't care, you're going to stand out. Finally, on the show's finale on April 24th, he failed, or succeeded rather, to not receive enough votes to make the final cut for the boy band. His entire ordeal lasted around 3 months. 
He took to Weibo with a message for his 1.7 million followers. Thank you everybody for your support. I'm finally off work. Whether he was really desperate to get off the show or if it was all just an act, it still makes for a good story. One thing's for sure, he certainly became one of the most memorable contestants of the season. And on that note, it's Thursday today, so it's time for another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. As you guys know, every Sunday we do the Top 10 Chinese Dramas and Actors of the Week. In this segment, I give some of my thoughts and predictions as to who the champions will be. My prediction for the top web drama is The Long Ballad starring Dilraba and Liu Wu. The Long Ballad is on a roll right now. I did a segment in last episode which shows what a hit it is domestically and internationally. I expect it to be champion again in this Sunday's list. My prediction for the top TV drama is A Love for Dilemma starring Candy Song and Tong Da Wei. A Love for Dilemma is by far and away the hottest drama on Chinese TV at the moment. The Glory of Youth with Li Feng is behind it, but by quite a distance. And my prediction for the top drama actor is Li Feng. Li Feng is and always has been a Chinese TV drama darling. Every time he has a new drama, he surges to the top of the chart. I think he'll be the top drama actor for a third week in a row. And that's been another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. And it also brings us to the end of this episode. If you want to check out the t-shirt or other Chinese drama merchandise, there's a link to it in the description below. And this show would not be possible without your support, so I, I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!